try to contestate this presentation like my idol uh, used to start, uh, George, uh, saying that uh, in the next 10, 10 15 minutes I will <laughs> to talk about <laughs> some uh, topics that uh, will be, I think, very interesting. And uh, I would like to start with this uh, proverb about the Russian proverb in uh, honor of uh, our colleagues. So, Travel never comes alone, as you can see here. This is my outline, as I said as I said to you before, and we have to talk about two topics in this, uh, in this uh, presentation, bio-RSA and B2 deformity. Why? Because we have to explain what means tri uh, the treatment options, options for B2 deformity and what kind of deformity is really the B2. Because sometimes we don't understand really with this, uh, uh, with this, this with this problem. And by uh, say it is only a localizing technique or uh, and uh, how we can use it in the B2 settings in this case. As you can see here in these slides, you can see a lot of kind of treatment uh, that you can use uh, in uh, our history for the treatment of B2 problem. The most uh, common at the, at the beginning was of course the Electroplastic plus extensive breathing. We had uh, we just talking uh, enough about this kind of treatment. Running through the RSA, that uh, is uh, now uh, the, the most common for this kind of problem. Above all, if we, we, if we expect uh, the parameters that suggest a such deal, as you can see here, the neoglenoid progression on more than 27 degrees and uh, or female had the subluxation more than 80 degrees. These are really a very important parameter, as you can see. So, in 1999, uh, Gilles published this paper about uh, the B2 and the strata, the, the B2 lenoid, you know? And everybody, everybody of, of us uh, knows of means B2 lenoid. And uh, in 1999, he has uh, not very much kind of treatment to, to deal with this kind of problem. Maybe the eccentric breathing was the most common, as you can see here. And uh, what happened with the eccentric breathing? You can see here progressive uh, destruction of the stronger bone. And uh, with uh, an excessive uh, possible medialization, medialization of the wall to the glenoid, as you can see here. And uh, finding uh, the poor bone density of the bone, quality of the, of the bone uh, behind the our, our base plate. So it's not so suggestible for this kind of treatment. So we pass to the bio RSA. There is a not a food, of course. But bio RSA means bio and a bony increased offset <coughs> about uh, the glenoid side, as you can see here. So we lent the offset of the glenoid. It was, uh, of course, uh, described by our friend uh, Pascal Boileau and uh, means to perform, to harvest this kind of uh, cylinder from the center of the humeral head. And uh, this, this cylinder is applied just behind the metal base plate allowing a lengthening of the glenoid, uh, which is our goal, our goal. To, of course, to avoid uh, an option and uh, to increase the performance of our rotator cuff muscles that are more lengthened and uh, works better for uh, the big curve. But um, if we marry uh, the B2 and the bio RSA, what will we happen in our settings? Is it possible to combine these uh, two techniques uh, in this way? Is it, is it good? Uh, no, it's not good, of course, because uh, we left uh, a very big uh, bony defect, as you can see here in the back of the glenoid ball. So we try to perform uh, the barrier say, in retroversion. I don't like very much to position a metal back in retroversion. So it's not the good treatment as you can see here. Maybe 
we can try to perform sensing trimming and uh, to add the cylinder to compensate the, the noise wall that to arrive to the, the original plane of the genoid. Maybe do. But the last uh, release that I used to play since uh, three years together with uh, my friends that uh, and really it's uh, here together with us is to compensate this uh, defect posteriorly or anteriorly if you want if you have this kind where to have this kind of defect with an angled bio RSA. This is uh, the first technique uh, as you can see here when you I when I didn't have the, the right guide I tried to move the guide, angle the guide, the guide to perform a tilted graph, as you can see here, and, and weathering with, uh, with my soul. After that, I write the angle guide, and the harvesting was really more easy. And after that, I used to perform an off-axis flattening of the glenoid, okay? Leaving the defect, leaving the retroversion. Why? Because the retroversion or uh, the superior inclination must be filled by the graph without removing good bone. This is my philosophy. But at the end of my experience, I studied a lot of, and of my passion. This is my one of my last publications, and I uh, show that uh, unfortunately, doing bio-RSA or not with a, a really good lateral lateralized stem doesn't take to very better results, as you can see here. The results were almost the same. This is another study that we are uh, uh, just uh, releasing and uh, sending to publication that uh, compare a straight stem to a carved stem. And uh, of course, we have better results with a carved lateralized stem. So we can conclude sometimes that uh, maybe it's the human lateralization that is uh, better and uh, fundamental for uh, the results of our uh, Replacements. Zero, of course, uh, in these, with these uh, publications, uh, studied with us, together with us, the same resources. As you can see here that uh, a minimal lateralization of 5 millimeters with a very good lateral lateralized stem is enough to have good results. The only problem may be the abutment, the abutment against the prominent coracoid in uh, anterior flexions. This is my personal experience that uh, we are really analyzing. We have analyzed uh, 260 uh, reverse scooter arthroplasty with uh, 24 uh, uh, minimum follow-up, as you can see here. And uh, in this population, we uh, uh, highlighted 30 B2 glenoid, as you can see here. 16 were treated with bio RSA and 14 with no bio RSA. And unfortunately, we didn't find uh, any statistical difference. So, what do we have to do? We have to waste our bio RSA? No. Why? Because we have to think that we have uh, to understand to the scapula, not only to the axial plane, for the B2, for example, but, but with another plane, the coronal plane. Do you remember the power classification? As you can see here, our population of uh, RSA was divided in this, uh, in this case with uh, a majority, as you can see here, of T1 and T3. This means that we have two kinds of deformity to compensate. 
during our operation, during our procedure, as you can see here. <coughs> this is uh, one of the first uh, bioassay that we performed, only correcting the B2N. You can see here that uh, the genosphere is uh, oriented upward a little bit. Okay. Now I have to introduce, introduce the reverse sugar angle that uh, was really uh, just, just uh, recently released by these two friends of us that uh, is uh, really crucial to understand how to, to implant our base plate. Because uh, if you have, for example, an E1 that is a concave glenoid, glenoid and if you have uh, a very small round like the most of the, of the base plate that we use in the lower part of the glenoid, you will orient your base plate upward. So you have to make this calculation. What about healing? I'm very happy to talk about it because uh, it's always an issue during this Congress. Look at this uh, CT scan, for example. A very satisfying feeling of the bone graft. Look at this other CT scan. Really satisfying results. We have performed uh, at least in our experience 40 CT scan check and we are really very satisfied about that. Even if our friend George says that uh, unfortunately it's, it's, uh, it's not the, the right way to understand if uh, the gas is, is, is incorporated or not. But I have to say that uh, after 1400 by your essay that I performed during these years, I am not any gut failure for incorporation. So hope we go was wrong. This is a this is not a gut incorporation. No. It was a, an Athens in, infection. Look at look at what horrible gains compared with how the gut is is moving. It's not incorporated, but only for the infection. So this is a pattern with 30 degrees retroversion, as you can see here. Phase up cases. This is our blue team that testify the bipolar deformity, 30 degrees, and superior and very weak superior inclination. So we choose to use a bone graph. This is the blue team, as you know. Of course, this is the graph that we performed after the harvesting. And uh, this is the way we have molded this graph. Be why? Because we can mold the bone. Bone is not metal. Try with this, try with this to perform the same. So the procedure went on the same way we did on taxis. Uh, the the guide wire was uh, on axis, of course, to prepare the glenoid uh, and so on. I don't want to bother you. This is the, the, the final view of the operation. Really, really good, good uh, material inclination. We are very satisfied. And this is, of course, our result. Thank you very much.